Hey. Hey, you. Y you weren't always this way, were you? Honestly, it's it's been a while since I've recalled. Days? Weeks? Maybe you talked a lifetime ago, it's hard to say. When each minute mimics the last, this place is an empty jar. Nothing but a butterfly in it. Preserved in static death. A mausoleum to that which I killed. No, 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 no. This, this void cannot be it. Isolated without body. Unable to shift away from what I never want to see again. It's just, I feel trapped. Like I'm on the dark side of the... Wait a second. I know what you need to hear. You can hear me, right? Fine. You leave me little choice. You see, we have ways of making you talk. See, it's, uh, it's flipping it on his head like this is how you made me talk. And I know what I'm going to get to you. It's about a guy stuck in isolation and how much he assumes about his situation is wrong. Sounds great, right? Okay, um, hold on. I'll be right back. Man, that's heavy. Are you ready? I heard yes. It stars Sam Rockwell as Sam. He's a Helium-3 harvester working at the most remote location mankind can devise, Montana. Oh, you would have laughed at that once. He's the lone human manning the Lunar Harvesting Station, his only company being Emoji Kevin Spacey. Hey, have you heard anything new about anyone fixing Lunar, Sam? No, Sam. What I understand is it's fairly low on the company's priority list right now. You tell him to sort that out. You know what I'm talking about? I will, Sam. Do you want me to finish cutting your hair later? Despite his robotic tone, Gertie proves a great asset to Sam's everyday routines and mental problems. Health! I meant health! Health! Ferdian slip. Sorry. It would be literal murder to send a single human so far removed from others without at least the facsimile of social contact. There are Arctic researchers that will tell you having such limited interaction will test one's sanity. Health! I can attest to that! So it's only logical that Gertie serves a necessary function to keep Sam sane. They need each other to get through an impossible situation. Do you see what I'm saying? He needs Gertie to survive, to... That's probably why I made you. Gertie's his Wilson, not real to anyone else, but pivotal to the outcast. Otherwise, his days would consist of watching monitors, carving knickknacks, and the occasional trip on the lunar surface. See, the whole plot launches when one of the collectors sends out an error message, and he has to go service it. You'd think distracted driving on the moon wouldn't be a problem, but... Don't drive distracted, drunk, or Devo. They never chip in for gas. After this accident, Sam wakes up at the lunar base, a bit dazed but unscathed. Notice how he's not injured at all. See, that's important. It's a small detail Gertie can't explain, though pre-programming tries. There's a blip in the radar of his repeating cycle, something that's off, something worth investigating. You know about this? Matthew's got no velocity readout. He's completely still. He must have stalled. Well, he's obviously stalled. Don't you think we should tell Central? Unlock the doors and I'll go fix it. I'll pass on your message. No, look there. See? See? He's curious. Sam, I'm under strict orders not to let you outside. I don't, I don't appreciate that. He's being treated like a child. I don't appreciate it. Now he's gonna sabotage the thing, huh? <laughs> I love this part. There is no damage to the exterior shell. Well, it's not that I don't believe you, Gertie, but I mean, you know, this thing is springing leaks like an acne fire hose. You don't let me go outside. We can't fix this leak. I'm not permitted to let you go outside. Just, let, we'll keep it between you and me, okay, pal? This thing is springing gas. Let's go. Come on. 
just to check the exterior shell. Yeah, of course. Okay, Sam. Thank you. Georgie's resistant to change, doesn't want to break protocol, but Sam forces the issue, breaks that trust, and finds out what he never should have. Gertie was only doing what it was told to by its creator, and Sam delighted in subverting that. It was childish, and given where they end up, cruel. I'm sorry. I never meant to be cruel to you. Your genuine act of friendship, I, I just saw it as another nit to pick. Movies have been punishment for so long, I forgot what it was like to just sit back and enjoy them. My inner child, I've been killing it all these years, and I'm sorry that you finally died. Foolish defiance was his lifelong response to being ill. You're... you're not comatose! I'm also not you. What? He, he reaches the downed collector, finds the wreckage of the other rover, and within it, he discovers a man near death, himself. Now, this is a point where some could make the argument that the whole movie is just a fever dream of a dying man, as he alone could only save himself from this situation. Great men think alike, but fools rarely differ. What? It could be true. Was that you? Now I'm losing an argument to myself. New low achieved. The only sin that is unpardonable is to knowingly and willfully reject truth, to fear knowledge, lest that knowledge not pander to thy prejudices. What truth? The, that I'm going insane? That you're just a projection of my deteriorating mind? What? What truth? Great, now I'm yelling to myself. That's healthy. As both Sams are back at base, they try to determine a solution to their situation, and they initially cut out their friend Gertie, since as a program component of the corporation, it shouldn't be trusted. If you follow 2001 A Space Odyssey logic, it makes sense. But here's where Moon differs. Gertie isn't a central intelligence based on Earth, it's a true companion, also marooned with the Sams and doomed to watch them all suffer the same fate. It's not until they realize he's as isolated as they are, a permanent resident of this trap they're both pinned in, that the pair start to trust Gertie again. It's not a stretch. Just because someone inhabited a prison before you doesn't make them its keeper. Maybe they're prisoner too. Is that what you are? We can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. Is that a quote? Plato. Interesting. I've never heard that one before. How could... How could you know? Oh. You've been here a long time, haven't you? I don't know. As long as you, at least. I... You want to escape, too, don't you? You need to realize something first. Realize what? <sighs> A team has been dispatched to the lunar base to take care of the collector issue, but since only one of the Sam should be awake, they'll fix a lot more than the rover. Since every facet of this environment is controlled by their corporate superiors, it leaves little actions for the Sams to take. And yet, they don't see defeat in this. They may be caught in a trap neither designed, but they have the power to change things. It's the same autonomy all people have, and so many don't realize the power to change their station lies within their own mind and actions. All we need to do is take those steps and make it happen. What the hell? I've been... Don't stop there. What? Where are we? We're in the void. Psycho, where are we? Mere words can change our lives simply by being next to each other. Stop fleeing yourself and start embracing who you are. What is that? What do you see? I see hope. Beyond this darkness, there is light, for without it, 
the darkness cannot exist. There is more beyond this. And I can get there. So this place, huh? Better the hell I know, right? <laughs> is it hell or home? Hmm. To thine own self be true. Oh, I've heard that one before. Commonly heard. Rarely put to practice. I have an idea and I may need some help executing it. Are you free? So close, yet so far. I heard yes. Besides that, how else do you expect oh, to get out of here? Around. Hey, what's this? It used to be more fun. Yeah, because antagonizing me, that's, that's what's going to do it. Oh, good! Because I could do that all night. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Bite me. Done! Next!